They are trying to stop you from voting, and Greg Pallast is having to go back to court. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Greg, welcome back. So uh, you're having to sue Georgia again? Do I have this right? Well, I'm hoping not. What, what if they did the right thing? Uh, the, as you know, uh, about six weeks ago, the ACLU issued a report of mine that 198,351 voters, you know, nearly 200 grand, grand of voters, were wrongly, illegally removed from the voter rolls by a partisan hack named Brad, Brad Raffensperger. His name really is Perger. The guy who took Brian Kemp's place and, and continued Brian Kemp's uh, uh, bleaching of the voter rolls whiter than white. And we have said, look, you've got to take a look at this list that, we, that the ACLU re released, and you've got to look at the evidence that these people are wrongly removed. Put them back on so they can vote. Now, um, I have to say that in the state of Wisconsin, they took our information, our list, and they agreed with us that the voters shouldn't be purged. But in the state of Georgia... Look, let's face it, the reason we all have Georgia on our mind is that it could change not only the White House, but the Senate. And that's what the GOP is concerned with. It's now a white minority state. They don't stand a chance. The polls are showing Biden is uh, neck and neck with Trump. But more important, the two Democrats are uh, winning the Senate races. That could flip the Senate. Um, and they are panicked. So the only thing that they can do is stop voters from voting. So we are demanding that they look at this information. I don't care whether it's, it's not up to me whether people vote Democratic or Republican. The issue is there's 198,000 voters out there who are going to be blocked from voting. That's four times the supposed Kemp victory margin of 2018. And this could literally determine the presidency and the Senate. Um, we're very concerned so we're saying, look, we, we beat you in court once. By the way, you remember uh, the Palace Investigative Fund. I sued Brian Kemp when he was Secretary of State and his current successor. And the federal courts said, you guys are, are, um, are lying, basically, to the court. You better open up your files to Mr. Palace. He even had a pair of lawyers. So I was saying, look, do, you want, do I really have to sue you again? Of course, they want me to sue because they know that they can kite that past the election. I'm asking, I don't know what to do except to say, call on on uh, the uh, this GOP hack in Georgia to try to remember that he's an American and put these Americans back on the voter rolls. Yeah, it's it's an amazing amazing story. Um, broadly speaking, as you're looking out at the at the country here, you know, with your mm -hmm. investigative reporter hat on and having been the guy who broke back in twenty in two thousand, excuse me, the story of how. The only reason that George W. Bush even got within spitting distance of Al Gore was because his brother took uh, George W. Bush's felon list from Texas, applied it to the voter list in Florida, where his brother Jeb was the governor, and yep. uh, you know purged, what was it, 90,000 African Americans to the voting rolls? Uh, 94,000 people were purged, mostly African Americans. That was the election. 88% were, were Democratic voters. And that's how we ended up with George W. as president. Uh, let's we are hoping that we don't uh, have a Jim Crow election again, but it's looking bad. So are you seeing this happening in other states beyond Georgia? Other states, uh, yes. There's many states where we've had these ugly purges from uh, the Carolinas. We've had about 30 states conducting purges. Uh, the most severe is Ohio. Nearly a million voters wiped off the voter rolls by the GOP uh, hackster who is the, um, who's the Secretary of State there. Very serious stuff. And then we also have the problem that in states where even the Democrats have taken over, like North Carolina and uh, Michigan, where unlike um, Wisconsin or other states, they're not putting back the people that were removed by the GOP. So I'm very, very concerned that we're going to have literally millions of people. Remember, according to Brennan Center and the, and the federal government, 16.7 million people have been removed from the voter rolls, purged, wiped out in the last two years. Um, there's going to be a lot of people showing up surprised that they're not allowed to vote. I do want to remind people, bring ID, bring proof of address, because if you've been wiped off the voter rolls, you don't know it, you show up in several states like Michigan and Wisconsin, you can register on Election Day, but you're going to have to have all kinds of paperwork with you. Bring it. It could be you. Right. Bring your Social Security card, bring your birth certificate, bring your utility bills, bring your driver's license, bring your passport, bring everything you possibly can. Let me just Anything remind with people. A, with an official picture on it. 
Yeah, a photo right. ID in some yeah. states. Yeah, let me just remind people that in the 2016 election, the exit polls showed Hillary Clinton won Florida 47 to 46 percent, that she won North Carolina 48 to 46 percent, that she won Pennsylvania 50 to 46 percent. These are the exit polls. And she won Wisconsin 48 to 44 percent. But in each one of those four states, because those people who gave her the margin of victory were almost certainly voting provisional ballots because they had been purged from those states' voter rolls by Republican secretaries of state. When they walked out of the ballot, out of the voting place, they told the exit pollster, yes, I voted for Hillary Clinton, but the state never counted their ballots because there wasn't a lawsuit in those states that forced them to, and red states generally don't count provisional ballots. And so yeah, specifically, instead, yeah. so, so we saw, the, the bottom line is we saw a two and a half point gain for Trump in Florida. We saw a 5.9% gain for Trump in North Carolina. We saw a 5.6% red shift for, for Trump in Pennsylvania. And we saw a 5.1% red shift for Trump in Wisconsin. Um, we're looking at polls right now that are within two, three, four percent in these states where you've got over five percent red shift caused by people being thrown off the voting rolls. And that was 2016. I, it sounds to me like they're getting even more aggressive now, Greg. Or is this um, yes. yeah, are they less aggressive? It, it, no, it's more aggressive. It's nasty. It's aggressive. I've been trying to bust them. Thank you to the ACLU. Thank you to Black Voters Matter, warning people, trying to reverse this. Again, our only uh, palpable success is Wisconsin. And by the way, when you say, understand, we have this nasty little secret America where we don't count all the votes. 925,000, nearly 1 million provisional ballots were cast in 2016 and then rejected never counted, never tallied. Only a million, which is, by the way, more than 11 times Trump's supposed victory margin. So it, it's huge. Be very careful with your registration. Check your registration right now at vote.org or go to gregpalace.com, check out the links. Uh, and in those states where you can re-register, do so, where you have same-day registration, bring your ID, and uh, again, and by the way, a lot of states don't tell you, like I walk into a uh, California voting station, there's no sign, no indication that you can actually register right there, right now, if they say that, you don't, that you're not registered. Instead of taking a provisional ballot, say, may I register today? I've got ID with me. So, you know, right. look, the trickery, they're desperate. The trickery is terrible. In places like Georgia, where it's not only the presidency, but two Senate races, Michigan, where there's a, a, a tight, tight Senate race, look out for the, uh, for the Jim Crow trickery. It's really bad. Yeah, this they're, year. And, it, and, they're getting, and, they're, and they're having to do this, uh, you know, because this is the only way they can win elections. The front page graphic on the New York Times uh, website right now, um, in 1976, 71% of the voters were white college voters without college degrees. That's Trump's base. Today, that's 39 percent. In 70, 76, 17 percent of the electorate was white voters with college degrees who tend to be Democratic voters. Now it's 34 percent. And in 76, only 11 percent of the electorate was minority voters. Today, it's 27 percent. So, you know, they're they're running against the demographic tide. And the only way they can do it is to suppress the vote. And Greg Palace, you are doing God's work uh, out there telling people about it. They should get over to gregpalace.com and see the whole story. Greg, thanks for dropping by. I told God to bring his ID to vote. Bye. <laughs> there you go, Greg. Amen. And be sure to check out Greg's new book, How Trump Stole 2020.